If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to answer the question first on your own before listening on. In part A of the question, we are asked to find the resistance of each light bulb. And for each light bulb, we are given a power value as well as a potential difference. So we would want a relationship between power, potential difference, and resistance. And of course, such a relationship exists. We have written it already in part A here. We want to solve this equation for resistance. So let's multiply both sides of the equation by resistance. And then we will divide both sides by the power. So we can see that the resistance is equal to the potential difference squared divided by the power. Now we have to do this for each light bulb. So for, for light bulb A, we can use subscripts A. We would have the potential difference of light bulb A squared divided by the power of light bulb A. For A, the potential difference was given as 120 volts. Don't forget to square it and then divide by the power of 25 watts. When you work this out, you should get 576 ohms. So that's the answer for the resistance of light bulb A. For light bulb B, it's the same idea. We're going to take the potential difference of 120 volts, square it, and then divide by the given power, which was 100 watts. And when we do that, we should get 144 ohms. So these are the correct answers for part A of the question. In part B, we are asked during what time interval does one coulomb pass into the light bulb? Now one coulomb could be represented by a delta Q is the typical symbol, and we're asked to find a time interval, so that would be delta T. So we need a relationship between delta T and delta Q. Now we actually know that the current that passes through the bulb would equal the amount of charge going through the ball, bulb divided by the time interval. And what we want to do again is solve this. So this time we're solving for the time interval, multiply both sides by delta T, They'll cancel out on the right-hand side. And then to solve for the delta T, you will divide both sides by the current value. So the currents will cancel out. Now, therefore, we can see that the time interval is equal to the amount of charge divided by current. Now, we don't have the current for light bulb A, but of course, there is a way to obtain the current. We know from Ohm's law that the potential difference is equal to the current times the resistance. So, if we divide both sides of this equation by the resistance, then we can see that the current, I, is equal to delta V divided by R. So we'll plug this expression in for the current, I, and this will give us a way of finding the time interval in terms of all known quantities. Now we end up with a complex fraction, which is a little bit challenging to work with, but we're just going to apply keep change flip, so we keep the delta Q, we change the division to multiplication, and then we flip the fraction over to make it R over delta V. So these would be the correct quantities that we would need to find the time interval for part B of this question. Now, the amount of charge was given as one coulomb, I think. Yes, it was one coulomb. The resistance we just determined earlier, it was 576 ohms. And then the potential difference for light bulb A is 120 volts. So we will punch these quantities into our calculator, and when we do that, we get 4.8, and this is a time interval, so the unit will be in seconds. So that is the correct answer to part B of the question. Scrolling up to part C, it says, is this charge different upon its exit versus its entry into the light bulb? And the short answer is no. And the reason would be that charge is conserved. So that simply means that if one coulomb of charge is entering the light bulb, then one coulomb necessarily must exit. And so this would be the correct answer to part C of the question. Moving on to part D, we are asked in what time interval does one joule pass into light bulb A? Now joule is a unit of energy, and we recall that there is a nice relationship between power energy and time interval given as follows. We need to rearrange this equation however and solve it for delta t. So we'll multiply both sides by delta t. This seems to be a pattern in these questions and that will cancel it out on the right hand side and then we'll end up having to divide both sides by the power. 
So then we can see that the time interval for part D will equal the amount of energy divided by the power. The energy was given as one joule, and then the power for light bulb A was 25 watts. Let's just double check that. There it is right there for light bulb A. Okay, so we'll divide these, and when we do so, we get 0 0.04 seconds. And that would be the correct answer to part D. Part E is a concept question, by what mechanism does this energy enter and exit the light bulb? It's kind of a strange question, energy mechanism. We have our light bulb, and then a wire coming in, wire coming out. We might say that the energy coming in would be electrical transmission, perhaps. And then the energy exiting in the form of heat and light, so we can perhaps say heat and radiation would be the energy that's coming out. So these would be reasonable answers for part E of this question. We finally move on to part F, which is asking us to find the cost of running this light bulb. Now, we are given a time interval, and we were given a, I guess, a rate at which the electrical company charges for electricity. So we have to make sense of all of this. We want to remember that the power, again, is energy divided by delta T. This time, however, we're gonna solve for the energy. We're gonna multiply both sides by delta T. And therefore, we can see that the energy is equal to the power times the time interval. Now, the power, let's see which light bulb this is. Unsurprisingly, light bulb A, the power was 25 watts. But because the electric company charges in terms of kilowatts, we're going to actually want to convert this into kilowatts. And we recall that one kilowatt is 10 to the power of 3 watts. So setting it up in this manner will cancel the watts and give us the power in terms of kilowatts. The time interval was 30 days, but we don't want days. We want it in hours. And that way our final unit will be kilowatt hours. We know one day, of course, is 24 hours. The days here will cancel out. And if you look at the setup very carefully, you can see that you are indeed left with kilowatt hours, which is a very convenient unit for us to, to be in. Let's punch this into our calculator and we can see the amount of energy in 30 days is equal to 18 kilowatt hours. But then we were told that the electric company charges was about 11 cents, I believe, per kilowatt hour. So all we will do to get the total cost is take the number of kilowatt hours that we obtained, multiply that by the rate at which they charge, 11 cents per kilowatt hour. We multiply this out and we end up with $1.98. So this would be the final answer to part F.